Hey friends, now every week behind the scenes of Walk It Out, there is a lot going on. There is books to look at, there are people to research, there is a lot of decisions being made of who to have on and who not to have on as guests. There are so many amazing people, but since I only do this once a week, it's sometimes hard to pick. But I have to tell you, um, when I was approached to see if I want to um interview the next couple, it was an immediate yes. I did not even have to think about it. Now, I'm going to be talking to Janet and Jeff Bench, and you may think, who? I've never even heard of this couple before. You'll be amazed. They've written over 100 books. They um, have written some of my very favorite books, but their names might not be very familiar. Unless you see their books. Now, if you're in the homeschool or if you have kids, you might recognize the brown cover YWAM missionary stories. These are by far my favorite books to share um, in our homeschool. What I really wanted when I thought about homeschooling my kids is I wanted them to develop character values um, that are related to the Christian walk. And it's not just about... Um, doing the right things or saying the right things or, um, you know, reading your Bible every day and doing devotions. But really, my heart was to train up my kids and to really understand what it means to follow Christ completely, even in very hard situations, in very hard circumstances, and um, really even when we face um, conflict, when we face persecution, how can we keep following God? How can we stand strong in our faith? And I re- thought of these books. I thought of these missionary stories. And I remember first reading them with our older kids. And this is in, you know, the late 90s. Um, so that's dating me a little bit. <laughs> but going back and pulling out these stories and just being so touched by them. And I remember my daughter at the time, that's really where it put the first seeds in her heart of becoming a missionary. And not that I um, necessarily want all my kids to be missionaries. That's not the goal of these books. The goal is is really to show them what it is to walk a Christian walk, what it is to put our faith in God um, and be faithful until the end. Now, we love these missionary stories. I have dozens of them around the house, and I'll be talking in this um, show about some of my favorite, and also Janet and Jeff will be sharing some of their favorite books um, that that they've written. But it's so fun because I was at a recent homeschooling conference And I told my daughter um, to pick out some of these books that we didn't have yet. My goal is to collect all of them, which it might take us a while, but that is my goal. And as she was there, this is my little uh, nine-year-old, as Alyssa was there, she was picking them up and she was looking at the top of them to see how thick they were. And she kept going down the line and looking at them. And I said, what are you doing? She says, I don't want to find the short ones because if I find the short ones, then they die too quickly, (laughs) which I just thought was so insightful because yes, I mean, all the ones we've read so far are historical books. So the missionary has died. But as I'm crying my way through the last chapter, my heart is just so full to know that people are out there have been so faithful to step out and do the things that God is asking them to do. And sometimes doing the things that God is asking us to do is going across the world. Sometimes doing the things that God asks us to do is going across the street. Sometimes it's sitting down and writing maybe a message that he has put on your heart. And that's another thing that I wanted to mention today. Um, I have a seven day writers challenge that is absolutely free that I would love you to join in. So do you have a passion for writing? Um, have you tried developing a regular writing practice, but have trouble making it stick? Well, the seven day writers challenge, basically what it is, is you sign up in an email Um, on the website. So if you go to the show notes um, or even just go to my website, trishagoyer.com, there'll be a pop-up that will pop up there and invite you to join the seven-day writer's challenge. You put in your email and then for seven days in a row, I will send you a lesson. And if you do your lesson and reply to me, I will say, great job. You'll actually be hearing from me. But I really just want to encourage people. I know how hard it is to sit down and put the words on paper and it doesn't turn out like we thought. And we just think that we're not any good. I just want to encourage people to put in the daily writing practice because the truth is um, our words can impact others. And you'll hear that today so much as we talk to Jeff and Janet.
them sitting down working on these books. It impacts young people, old people, people in prison, people all around the world. And your words can do that too. Um, I could write only so many books. Jeff and Janet can write only so many books, but God can use your voice too. So if you have any inclinations of becoming a writer, I would love you to join the challenge. But in the meantime, I hope that you will enjoy uh, my conversation with Janet and Jeff. You're listening to Walk It Out with Trisha Goyer, where we discover what it looks like to follow God and be swept away on the journey of a lifetime author of over 70 books, mom of 10, yes, 10, homeschooler and speaker, Trisha Goyer will explore what radical obedience to God's word looks like. It's time to hear from God lovers who've dared to say yes. Listen in to heart to heart chats and learn how others overcame doubts and fears. Discover how God used ordinary people to impact others one step at a time. If you're ready to get radical, get going and make a difference in this world, you're at the right place. Here's your host, prolific writer, world traveler, people lover, and mega nap taker, Trisha Goyer. Well, walk it out, friends. I am very excited to have two authors on today. We're going to be talking about a book series that I talk about often. If you see my Instagram post or Facebook post or have me talking about homeschool at any time, you'll hear me talking about the Christian Heroes Then and Now series. So we have the authors today, Jeff and Janet Benj. So welcome. Nice to be here. Thank you. It's so great to have you guys. Let's just start by, um, we'll start with you, Jeff, maybe just introducing yourself and then we'll move over to Janet. All righty. Well, I am Jeff Benj. Uh, I'm originally from New Zealand, uh, but now live in uh, Orlando, Florida. Um, and uh, we have, or I have, and along with Janet, been writing um, books for 33 years now. And we've been writing the Christian Hero series and the other series that goes with it, Heroes of History, for the last 22 years. Okay, and uh, I'm Janet Benge, and I'm Jeff's wife. We've been married for 40 years. Woohoo! We have um, three adult children, um, one of whom is adopted. And um, uh, yes, we write together. Um, and I'm also from New Zealand and, um, we are, um, we just keep, uh, keep going with the writing. Obviously we've done it for many, many years and, uh, still find lots of wonderful stories to tell. So that's kind of a little bit about us. I love that so much. Well, my, um, niece was in New Zealand a couple of years ago. She went for a year to study it's a beautiful place. I wish I would have gone to see her <laughs> you there. <should> have. <laughs> I know. It's, it's so amazing. It's so beautiful. I know um, you make your home in the States now, though. Mm-hmm. That is right. Yeah. Um, yes. We've lived here. Or actually, we've lived in the U.S. longer now than we ever lived in New Zealand, but it's home and our daughters and uh, grandkids are all married. Well, our daughters are married and we've got the grandkids and they're all here now in Central Florida. So this is pretty much home for us. <laughs> oh, that is wonderful. Well, I want, I'm going to ask you in a little bit how um, you got started writing this series. And But first, I just want to tell you a little bit of our story. So my husband and I have 10 kids and we've adopted seven of them. Um, and so we went from almost empty nesters to starting completely all over and I homeschooled again. Oh. So here we are. Oh. <laughs> our, our oldest will be 30 next week, and then um, I have an eight-year-old still. So we've been oh, doing this. Oh, my goodness. You really did yeah. jump right back in. Did you get nearly we, through before you started again? Yes. <laughs> we had our youngest was 16, and then we adopted a newborn. So wow. we completely started all over. Um, and then we've also adopted from foster care. So when we started homeschooling this new group, um, you know, uh, they – they hadn't, they'd been in public school. They hadn't had a lot of Christian education. So I said, you know what? The one thing that I want to focus on is just really good character building skills. And I was praying about it. And I had read a couple of the books with my older kids. And so I thought, this is it. I'm just going to pull out these Christian heroes, Zen and Now books. And we have read 
every school morning, um, even if we don't get to the math, we're going to make <laughs> sure and get a missionary book in. Uh, but I'm going to read you the list of the ones we've read mm-hmm. in the last um, two years. So we've read Nate Saint, Adoriam Judson, Hudson Taylor, Wilfred Grenfell, Mary Slesser, Amy Carmichael, Gladys Alward, Corey Tim Boone, William Carey, um, George Mueller, Eric Little, Elizabeth Fry, Jonathan Goforth, and Ida Scudder. Wow. And I think we're missing some yep. because um, <laughs> we, there, I think there's more that we've read that aren't even this list right here. Wow. But I, so this has meant so much to our family. Um, the first one we read was Nate Saint. And they didn't realize till probably three chapters to the end um, when they heard um, George Elliot, no, uh, with Jim Elliot's name mentioned, they finally connected the dots on who it was. Uh-huh. And we cried our way through the Aww. last three chapters of the book. So, um, yeah, so it, I just wanted to share first before we get started on hearing more about how you got started in these books, but just telling you how much it has meant to our family. And I speak at homeschool conferences and I encourage them all the time to pick up your books because it, it so important to teach our kids about these ma- amazing characters in history and how they really um, just have transformed the world for Christ. Indeed, yes. I mean, it's exciting. We were at a homeschool conference here in Florida about three weeks ago, and people come by and they have similar stories. They're like, wow, these books have really challenged our family, changed our family. Our kids just love these. We read them all the time, which, of course, are things as authors you love to hear. Um, and it's it's wonderful for us it's to go out and, and to hear that from people because, you know, we sit here and I sit here in my office and right away and, you know, so it's fun after it's gone full cycle to hear these things come back. Yeah. And I would love to hear um, just, I know before we even get on how you started writing the books, because I know you've had a personal, personal journey kind of around the world of following God. So um, either one of you, do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Uh, well, um uh, we started out in New Zealand. Uh, Jeff is from just outside of Wellington, and I'm from Hamilton. And um, I became a Christian at 16, and I think Jeff was around the same age. He comes from a um, brethren background, and I was Episcopalian. And uh, we uh, felt we married. I was 20, and Jeff was 24, so we, it seems very young now. Back then, I was feeling a bit like an old maid. <laughs> <laughs> such as the times, um, we married and we had our first daughter and uh, we felt a call to mission. So we joined Youth with a Mission and we uh, started out uh, in New Zealand. Then we went to uh, the Anastasis, which was a ship, a uh, hospital ship in Honolulu Harbor. From there, we went to the Philippines where we adopted a street kid, our son. And, um, and then we went to uh, Texas where we spent uh, three months being uh, with intensive training with John Elizabeth Sherrill at a writing school there, which, you know, John Elizabeth did the, yeah. you know, the hiding place. They kind of changed the whole genre of, of um, Christian uh, nonfiction. And then we, we started uh, doing a lot of ghostwriting for leaders of the mission. And then uh, – um, at one stage, uh, our publisher came to us and said, uh, you know, look at these missionary books. And we were youth with a mission and we didn't have any stories about, you know, missionaries uh, and the history of missions. So we started reading these books and I got to say they were very boring, a lot of them. And um, the stories, if you could actually read through them, the stories were fascinating, but they had been written sort of in, you know, 1930s language or whatever, and um, they actually managed to make them sound dull. And I was just like, this is crazy. <laughs> These stories are unbelievable. So um, we started out to, uh, just with one or two to start with, to really, um, really uh, be the am- ambassadors for these people um, to the next generation to tell the stories in a way that um, was factual, but that the kids could really, um, you know, understand the the peril and, you know, 
how difficult the difficulties that they went through and and then could really enjoy the victories with them so um we started they asked us to write one book and we did and then they asked us to write three more and we did and there was four in the series and thought we thought that was pre- <laughs> pretty darn cool and now i think we have we are writing uh on albert schweitzer right now and he's the 79th book in the series okay so yeah so uh we never in our wildest dream imagined that we would be nearly at 80 books and uh, all these years later but it's it's been wonderful well i've only read let me see two four six <laughs> eight ten twelve four i'm 18 to my kids yeah. and so uh, we have a i'm gonna have to adopt some more kids <laughs> so we can Sorry. get through <laughs> no i'm just no, joking I think you go to your local library and start a story time i think that would be way easier than adopting more <laughs> that's true well jeff i would love to hear um just how god prepared you for writing these books. As you walked it out, as you traveled, you've seen and experienced things that I know have really impacted um, your writing when you sit down. Uh, yes. Well, interestingly, um, I, I failed English twice in high school. <laughs> I was abysmal. I was in remedial reading. So I'm the least likely person to actually be an author these da- today. But um I guess God guided me and in ways that I had no idea. I tell people writing found me. I didn't go actually go looking for writing. When I joined Youth with a Mission, I was uh, a chef and I was the head cook on their mission ship, the Anastasis. And then we ended up in the Philippines working there, helping set up a kitchen for a new base they were starting. And uh, that all fell through, and so, but we had been writing newsletters home because that's what missionaries do to uh, raise. Uh, monthly support and people loved our newsletters and word got around that we wrote pretty good newsletters. And the next thing you knew that youth with a mission in the Philippines were writing a new, um, setting up a new newsletter and we got roped in to write that, which was good. And I guess it got noticed by uh, others out <laughs> outside. And so we got invited to this uh, school that youth with a mission in Texas was running with John Elizabeth Sherrill uh, and so at first I said, no, in fact, I said, no, I think three or four times before they finally prevailed mm. and uh, because, you know, writing eight pages, uh, for a newsletter and it was good, it was good copy, but it was like, and now you want me to go write a book and that's two, 300 pages. I don't think so. <laughs> but we, uh, finally said yes. And we arrived and the rest was kind of history. Uh, we have written, I think over 300 books, you know, with our, ghostwriting and stuff that we uh, used to do before we started on these books. And occasionally we still do that. So uh, that's how we got here. And I discovered along the way that I had a natural aptitude for writing um, and thinking in stories, telling stories. And surprisingly, uh, Janet and I both had complimentary gifts. And so we formed up to become uh, a team which we have been doing, like I say, for 33 years now, turning out books. Yeah, and I would love to hear how that teamwork um, works because I have 70 books published, but it's just me. Well, I guess some of them I've co-written, <laughs> but I have co-written some of them. with. Uh, but most of the time, it's me sitting here at the desk, researching for myself, uh, editing myself. So I would love to hear yep. just how your teamwork works. Well, as Jeff said, um, he, you know, he um, – uh, took the slow road to reading. And um, I had a very um, difficult time too. I'm dyslexic and <laughs> and I'm ADD. So uh, yeah, you put us together and we have formed a very, um, you know, unique bond. When we started to write together, it w- was a bit explosive. Um, we actually started on a, an, on a typewriter. Jeff said he could type and I couldn't type. And we started with a European typewriter where some of the letters are in different places. So he would be typing away in our newsletter and then he'd be making mistakes and then I'd be mad at him because he said he could type and he really couldn't. And uh, So uh, <laughs> it wasn't a very auspicious beginning. Um, but, you know, what we stuck with it and God, I don't know, he just kept sending more projects our way and uh, every time we tried to work together, we, it got a little smoother uh, and we knew what you know, what were, I think the main thing was figuring out our boundaries, uh, what, Mm -hmm. you know, what to um, 
correct from the other person and what to let go. Um, basically, the process is I'm actually quite a fast reader now. So I, and I love to research. Sometimes I say that writing the book is a punishment for the research <laughs> because I just, I could just keep researching. I don't have to have anything come out the other end. I just, just love it. So um, I do the initial research. Uh, I find all the books that I can. If it's somebody like Ed Iron Judson, where there's not a lot on, then I'll try to find everything. If it's someone, you know, like uh, George Washington, who there's more books on than you could ever read, then I'll look for the most reputable ones, the most recently written ones, um, you know, and really try to stay away from the ones with the kind of weird theories and things, um, which you can spot after, after a few years of doing this, like, mm, that doesn't sound right. Uh, so I read it and um, we kind of, I plot out in my head um, basically where I think we're going with it uh, and start writing. Um, I write a chapter, I leave gaps. As I said, I'm dyslexic. It's getting better after 35 years of constant practice, but I can still, um, you know, write things and think I've written something different than I actually have. And um, so Jeff has turned out to be quite the editor. So um, he, I write a first draft with lots of holes in it and he has a degree in history. So he goes through it and he'll be like, mm, I don't, I don't know if it was that, you know, maybe it was a bit more this way um, or whatever. And so we kind of go through, he goes through it and I'll leave um, page references and things because I do get bored uh, <laughs> with, with writing some scenes and some things. I'm like, oh, that just is a lot of work. So I'll leave those for him. And he loves to um, plod through those. So we're a really a good combination. And then when he's done that, it comes back to me and I read it again. And then he reads it again. And then uh, it goes off to um, our publisher. And one of the things that we have done, which is kind of unusual, is um, – when we got the first book or two back, uh, we would go through, you know, the, you know, the um, blue lines. We'd go through it, and we'd be like, "Well, the editor used this word. I think that word's better." And you know, I I got all knotted up with, with these kind of things. And we realized that, well, I realized for me personally that it was really sapping my energy and taking away the joy of writing. Um, so we ditched that. Uh, and we send off our, our manuscript and we do not see it again until it comes in the mail as a book. Oh, wow. So, yeah, which is kind of, I know it's unusual, but, you know, we have had a very long relationship with our publishers. We've known Tom Bragg in, for 32 years or something. Yeah. So, um, and, and, you know, it's not exactly as we would have done it if we had edited it, you know, gone over the edits ourselves. But um, we feel like the, the, the bigger gain is that we keep writing, that we get more books out and that we don't get hung up. So um, that's kind of a little bit of a weird thing that we do. But it's worked very well for us. And uh, so when, you know, when we send it off, we're done. And it helps yeah. that we write pretty clean copy too, <laughs> so the editor doesn't have to do too much to right. it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good. And I've got to the point, you know, after I think I'm in 70, book number 76, mm -hmm. where I will just accept all their changes right. and then I'll mm -hmm. just read it. Right. Um, and, and if there's something that will like, well, wait, that's not right. I'll go back and look. But, you know, 99%, their edits yeah. are great. <laughs> like, well, you they know? are. Yeah. And it can really, if you start looking at every single one, it can really, you know, hang you up on, you know, you, you can end up not liking the process anymore. And, yeah, absolutely. And our editor, we've had the same editor for the whole series, so that helps too. She knows our style and how we would like, you know, and so it, it, we never have any trouble. That yeah. is great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I've, I've read some of the other missionary books before. <laughs> we, we pulled up, a, I, I won't say the publisher, but we pulled up another book um, because we were just interested in the character. And my kids are like, why are we reading that one? We need to go back to the brown books. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a brown book. <laughs> there was so much historical detail that it was just too much. Like the story, it wasn't moving along. It wasn't. Right. And my youngest right. was eight, so yes. and right. it wasn't. Yeah, that's one of the things. You know, I was talking to a, a group of uh, twenty-year-olds in Kona a couple of weeks ago, and I, I said, you know, I think my ADD is really a gift. Um, and they, some of them started laughing, but I'm like, no, really, because. 
I, I know when I'm getting bored with something mm-hmm. um, and I'm getting bored, I would say about the same time as an eight-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, I can hyper-focus when I'm, um, when I'm researching. That's not a problem. I just love that. But, you know, when I'm writing, I'm like, oh, move, this is so long, you know. <laughs> and so uh, we don't dwell too long on anything that is, you know, getting boring. And I think, you know, Jeff has a history degree, so he gets a little – uh, he insists that these are not core biographies because we don't cover everything, you know, in a uniform way. We have uh, things that if, if I think it's getting boring, we'll just go, you know, for the next four years, James, blah, 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 and then boom, back to something interesting because we're in it for the, the continuity and the story. Mm. Yeah, Which I think is – yeah, go ahead. No, we are really – see ourselves as storytellers rather than traditional biographers. And so we're going in to find the story in this person's life, make it interesting and make it really, you know, gripping for that homeschool schoolers who are reading it, that, you know, the middle school and high school kids who are the real audience for our books. Uh, So that's what we do. Yeah. And I think that's what makes it so good for, um, reading out loud to kids because it is every chapter is there's something happening. <laughs> it's not just facts and dates. There's something, and then my kids later, um, you know, talk about their opium wars and this and that, and Hudson Taylor moved inward, and I mean, all these things are just able to tell that my husband exactly what happened. I'm like, they didn't even realize they just picked up so much history, right? As they're just going along with the story, um, which is, and what I wanted to also say is that we, out of my kids, we adopted. Um, we have five with ADHD and three dyslexic. So, oh, wonderful. Yeah. I must come and visit. <laughs> yes, I know. So um, they were so excited. It's so funny because um, I, I told them I'd be interviewing you and they were like so excited. So they'll have to listen to this later. Oh, they wanted yes. to jump, chime in, but it would just be too chaotic. <laughs> they all got on the phone call. Um, but I told them I was going to be interviewing you. And so it was so exciting for them because like these are our books. Like as soon as we finish one, one, they just go to the shelf and they're trying to figure out who we're going to read next and we'll vote and all, all of that. So, you know, this is something that's really bonded us together as a family, which is amazing that, you know, we could all sit down and we could talk about, um, you know, George Mueller, or Elizabeth Fry. I mean, all these people that um, a lot of people don't know about, but my kids right. have their whole, they know their whole story. Good. Yes, we need to know about these people. I mean, I think it's really, really important. They have a lot to teach us. And just looking around at our world, it just didn't get to be this way. People stuck their necks out and, you know, and and created change and followed God into some. I was just rereading it in Iram Judson. And uh, I mean, that they, they, they really took extreme lengths to change things. Um and I think, you know, we are standing on their shoulders and, and it's it's good to be reminded of that. And and the sacrifice, you know, Adoniram mm-hmm. Judson, um, the kids would be like, someone else died. <laughs> <laughs> Another child died. <laughs> and so they were so and I'm like, but look at this. This is this is their lives. This is what yeah. you know they had to go through. And even um and then it even becomes part of almost our family culture because because um one of their favorite scenes is Gladys Alward when she went into the jail and she told them, put down the machetes and everyone <laughs> obeyed her. So every time I walk Walk in and I'm like in my mom mode, like we're going to get this house clean. And I'm in my, you know, determined mode. They're like, here comes mom, put down the machete. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so, great. <laughs> mom was coming in. <laughs> Watch out, kid. <laughs> There's no going back. No, it's amazing. Yeah. And I, I must say one of the things that amazes me the most is the wide range of people that uh, really get something out of our books. We mm-hmm. uh, we have a program where we send them into maximum security um, prisons um, and people can sponsor that. Uh, and it's we get these letters back. We had one the other day from someone in Virginia and it was a beautifully written letter and he was just – uh, he was just saying, you know, what did he say that they valued them more than? I can't remember the wording. I should go find it. But it was just absolutely beautiful. His thank you and how you know they treasure them and they pass them from person to person, and then they have conversations about them. It helps with the monotony. And when he gets out, he, you know, he can't go overseas because of his um, record now. But he definitely is. Um, you know, wanting to support missionaries. I'm just like, 
that's crazy because mm-hmm. we have people whose six-year-old kids love to listen to them. And here we've got someone who I don't even know what he did, but it's got to be bad, you know, who's sitting in a maximum right. security prison and he's weeping at the same spot your, you know, your eight-year-old is weeping. It's like, that's not normal, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. It's not. It's just, it's really, um, it, that's what I think has surprised me the most about these books. Yeah. And what I love is that they are truly life changing. And um, I also wanted to share that, um, you know, I've homeschooled my older ones all the way through. And I remember we, one of the first ones we read was Gladys Alward. And, mm-hmm. and I think we probably read it in, oh, around, I'm trying to think, remember, remember what year. Um, early 2000s but mm-hmm. my daughter my oldest daughter was a, just a young girl at the time and she said I want to be a missionary someday and it is adorable you know when they're eight nine ten to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well then she graduated with her bachelor's um, when she was 20 and she's like mom I'm gonna go be a missionary wow and you know when we you know, heard this, it's like, okay, well, okay, where are you going? And is it safe? And <laughs> she's like, but mom, listen, you know, all the books that we read, and they weren't always safe. And remember, right. they would just pack their coffins, and they would, um, they would go <laughs> away on ships, and you'd never see them. I'm like, oh, no. I'm gonna go find those authors of those books. Now. <laughs> but she did, she ended up moving to the Czech Republic. Um, she went originally for one year, she raised all this, all the support. She's like, God's gonna provide. I'm not going to do any fundraising. I'm just going to be like George Mueller wow. and just pray for a provision. And um, she ended up moving over there, getting married. They just had a baby and she's still a missionary in the Czech Republic. She's 27 now. Wow, but, you know, it's truly, I mean, she's impacting people on a daily basis. And it's because yeah. you know, we sat down and read these stories. Wow. Well, that's great. We do hear lots of stories mm-hmm. of... Um, People who do that say like, oh man, you know, our family was changed or I want, went to be a missionary or our whole family went out to the mission field. Or we've had kids come on who've read like Nate Saint in uh book and said like, you know, I I now fly and I want to become a you mm-hmm. know missionary with MAF because I want to, you know, do, be challenged by that book. And, and so it's really amazing. Uh, to us, because uh, that's not what we said. I mean, we set out to inspire with these stories to show you, you your life and can make a difference in this world. Mm-hmm. You can you can change the world. That's what we do. We're storytellers. The fact that people then take these stories and make them their own and then follow through on them is just icing on the cake for us. So it's amazing. I w- when I was in Kona, there was uh, an older lady there, and she was a doctor, and her husband had been a doctor too, and they had read our books and gone out to China and worked in a special needs orphanage for fifteen years. Uh, and there was another girl there who had been raised on our books and was now in missionary training school. And it's, I mean, it, it it's very humbling. We don't even know how many languages our books are in. We think it's about twenty, but our publishers don't even know because some of them are behind the Iron Curtain. Um, you know, some of them, I believe, were the first pallets into um, Iran when they were allowed to bring uh, Iraq, when they were allowed to bring more, th- you know, bring things in. Uh, so they, the reach of them is uh, w- we can't begin to know where they're going and who they're, who they're speaking to. Oh, I love that so much. Okay, so now I want to hear what are your favorite missionaries? <laughs> you knew I was going to ask this, right? What are some of your favorites? Yes. <laughs> Well, you know, the classic answer is whatever I'm writing now, but <laughs> <laughs> we won't go the easy ro- route. Um, I love Adoniram Judson. Mm-hmm. I I just bonded in my heart with him. Um, it's funny that we should mention him, but I just feel like um, he just had such such a heart for God that even when things went really wrong, he was just still – moving forward. And I think, you know, when he's, when he digs his own grave and sits beside it, um, you know, a lot of authors would have made the decision for young people to just leave that out um, because obviously he was suffering from a severe depression. Um, But I, I really felt like that's, that is who he was. And, you know, he had a lot to be depressed about as your kids will attest, you know, there was just so many, you know, deaths and things go wrong and, you know, um, but I, I do, I do love Adoniram, and also the adventure in Adoniram is just crazy. Some of the yeah. stuff he does, you know, he's he's goes on a trip to nowhere on a 
on a on a boat and you know it gets uh imprisoned and next to lions in a cage and so there's plenty of like woo but under, <laughs> <laughs> underneath it there's just a, a very steady drumbeat of faith and commitment and i that's probably one of my favorites how about you jeff <laughs> it's a tough question of course um yeah, like Jana says, the ones we just finished are always, you know, the nicest. Ch- uh, Charles Muley is a great book. Uh, he's an African gentleman in Ethiopia. It's a phenomenal book. He was once the richest man in Kenya, and God challenged him to take his money and help street kids because he'd been abandoned. So that's a wonderful story. Um, Klaus Dieter Hoon, who's a doctor who started a hospital, German doctor who started a major, huge hospital in Peru, working with the Quechua, the poor people. That's another one of my favorites, probably my all-time favorite since I come from uh, New Zealand in the Pacific, uh, is uh, the John Williams book. John Williams is known throughout the Pacific. He was a uh, Methodist missionary who took a ship and he sailed from Tahiti through the islands, sharing the gospel as he went. And um, he is much revered to this day in the Pacific Islands in particular, and he has all kinds of amazing adventures as well. He gets shipwrecked and they have to uh, build a new ship to get off with one island, and, and they do an amazing things. Uh, and it has some humor because um, people show the English people on the ship show up and they have all these clothes on. Of course, these islanders are <laughs> next to naked. And, this, uh, and, and to this day, and, and so, for example, in the Cook Islands, they call uh, white people puppy ours, which means eight layers or seven layers because they have so many clothes on, they just couldn't <laughs> believe it. Um, but it's a great book uh, for, for a, you know about a man who is still revered in the Pacific Islands today as the kind of the bearer of Christianity to the islands. I love that. Well, I asked my kids so I could tell you. So they mentioned um, Nate Saint because I think that was the first one. And we were just so – we we couldn't even finish school for the next two days. We just cried over Nate Saint. <laughs> I'm like, he yeah. died a long time ago. You're not ago, selling it. You're not – there's just a lot of crying going on There's here. a lot of crying. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and then they mentioned George Mueller, who every right. time one of the other missionaries, like, was depressed or they're like, just be like George Mueller and pray. <laughs> <laughs> um, they That's also funny. loved um, Gladys Alward, of course. And then right. one – one that surprised us that we read this last year because I never heard of him was Wilfred Grenfell, uh-huh. um, yes. which was so. Uh, uh, but when he had to kill the dog, <laughs> we, oh, I yes. mean that was that was a hard that was yeah. a hard scene. Um, oh yeah. And then they loved uh, Mary Slessor. They loved when she went in and the one of the chiefs gave his wives to keep her warm, and they were oiled up um, <laughs> women that came in to keep her warm, like. They still talk about that. That was like the best thing ever. Um, That's so funny. All these, all these interesting facts that they know about these missionaries, which they just love. But one of the fun things um, this year, we read um, Jonathan Goforth, uh, who was in China. And what we realized was our pastor is Chinese. And so we, and we knew he was a Christian from, for generations. And so we had him come over and he doesn't know what missionary impacted his great grandparents, but both great grandparents on both sides were Christians. And so he came and did a, like an hour and a half slide presentation of his family and his history and their Christian faith over the wow. years. And, and now he's our family. So it's so interesting that as we're reading along, we're like, Hey, we know someone who's from China, <laughs> whose you know, family became Christians because of these missionaries. And I think it was during around the boxer rebellion. And we had, you know, heard about that. And so it's just amazing that my yeah. kids know these points in history and can connect them to real people today and Absolutely. how those, those missionaries impacted, you know, our pastor. So, yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. I'd love to see that presentation. <laughs> oh, well, we'll have to send Pastor Harry over. So. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, actually, I mean, that- you, you could just come over to our house sometime and we'll, we'll do the presentation right. again. But that's true, isn't it? I mean, the more we're writing about, you know, people, the more you see that there's a whole chain of people behind them that have impacted them. And, you know, like when Adoniram gets to to um, India, um, William Carey is waiting for him. And, yes. you know, it's like um, so many people that we've written about 
along with your children, have um, referred to George Mueller. I mean, he is just like Cory Ten Boom um, revered him. And it's like uh, the all of these connections and the more you read the books, the more you see that, wow, we're not acting alone. We're standing on the shoulders of of others who've gone before. And, and what an amazing message that is for, for young kids today. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it is what we need to build the character. And I, I talk to parents all the time, you know, um, if your kids know more, you know, YouTube channels, pop stars, if they know more names of those people than the missionaries, like we, we need to change this. We need to do something different. Like these are our Christian heroes that we need to be, you know, filling their minds and their hearts with so that when they do face struggles or trials, they can think back and they have these, these men and women who they could say, well, they had a tough time too, but I'm going to stay faithful to God. Absolutely, yes, yeah. It's it's uh, it's wonderful to start to um, link them all together, and and uh, I think kids today definitely need to feel that they're part of something larger than just their own generation. Which mm-hmm. um, I think technology and things like that has made that more difficult to see that lineage um, because there's so much that kids today are doing that, like their grandparents are kind of clueless about, you know, so it's easy to think, well, um, you know, they, they don't know what they're doing. They're just, you know, older, but um, they faced tremendous challenges. Yeah, absolutely. So um, recently we went to a homeschool conference and we have, you know, we've read 18. We we probably haven't that many more bought already. And so we, I told my daughter to go pick out some um, that we hadn't read yet. And she's nine. And she goes over to the shelf at the homeschool conference and she picks them up and she holds them towards her and she tilts them down. So she's looking at the top of all of them. Mm-hmm. And I asked her, I said, what are you doing? She says, I'm trying to find the thick ones because if they're too thin, <gasps> they die too quickly. <laughs> she was trying to find the fattest ones she oh, could. Oh, that's I'm, sweet. And, I'm, and sure, sure enough, the kids will watch me as I'm reading. And we get closer and closer to the end. They're like, oh, they're going to die soon. There's not I very know. many pages Yeah. Yet. Oh, they'll be like, oh, this isn't going to be uh, an, a sickness unto death. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna rise again. Again on this one, I know. <laughs> um, yes. But Charles Mully, you mentioned him. Um, mm. I, I told them we bought that one. I'm like, oh. we get to read one where he's still alive, and they're like, what? Oh yes, <laughs> yes. And you can go out to his website and things. We spent quite a long time with Charles. He came over um, to the states a couple of times, and that man is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, I just. Uh, you just you're just in awe. I mean, he's over seventy. He has diabetes. He is just. He seems to be really, really peaceful the whole time. Mm. At the same time, he's running all of these things. I I I actually left some things out of the book from what he was doing at the end of his life because it was just his life is just his impact is still just exponentially growing and it became unwieldy. We had to stick with some of the things that we had, you know, um, found the roots of earlier on. But uh, what a treat to be with him. What a wonderful man. Yes, he was truly an incredible man. Um, Mm. You know, and that's the thing. Sometimes you, people will inspire you. I had to go to Australia to um, interview one of the guys, David Bissot, for one one of the books. And he's one of the, he helped found the whole, concept of micro lending lending money mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. poor people and we were sitting in his garden in sydney australia and i he is the most amazing man i think i've ever sat with and talked because he had such a deep understanding of the poor and how you can reach out and you know touch them with the love of christ but also in very practical ways through money and through small business and stuff and I, you know i i uh to this day, I think he is the most amazing man that I've ever spoken to. Oh, that is so amazing. And that's what I was going to ask you as you are going through these. I mean, I know how much we're touched and changed mm-hmm. by reading them. I would just love to hear um, how you've personally been transformed or touched or changed um, in your process of writing these books. Um, Janet, we'll start with you. Well, to start with, we um, assure your children we do cry as well. 
Um, <laughs> more, I mean, I think pretty much every time by the time we've got them to, to their death, um, it's very, it's tough. It's very moving and, you know, we do cry. We cry as we edit it. We're, um, you know, it is, it's, we feel like we've lived you know with these people we've read a lot of their letters we've read read their journals we've you know just uh really delved into their lives for maybe three months and it's they like walk with us so um I think that's that's been an extraordinary privilege um I don't know anyone else who has spent the last uh 30 years uh reading you know every day about missionaries and um Ah, oh, what has it done to me? Well, I think it's made me realize that that everything is a is a team effort. That even the people who we're writing about, they have so many people praying for them, giving, um, you know, paving the way for them, following after them. Um, that it's, uh, you know, it's all about a continuity of, of God's plan. So um, while there are people out there who are truly amazing, uh, we, we all have the opportunity to contribute in some way to that, to that amazingness. And, um, you know, Jeff and my, my role is to, um, you know, re uh, to be their ambassadors and, uh, you know, that's, um, a tremendous privilege, and we we take it very very seriously. I love that. Well, Jeff, how has it changed you? Uh well, somewhat like General saying. I mean, you get to become you delve into these people's lives. They become friends. It's like you're carrying them around on your shoulders, and mm-hmm. um, and that has a profound impact on you. You know, as you begin to see how they live their lives and the impact that they had on the world. Um, and so it's, you see that you have a real privilege to take their stories and make them, um, uh, available and accessible to a whole new generation of people. Um, and so I think that's good. And I think one of the things that's really helped me is like you grow up, uh, as I did as the kind of the, at, at product of the hippie generation and this idea where well, we must go out in the streets and we must evangelize and we must do this. And, you know, I did that, uh, but I wasn't the most effective at doing that. But I've come to realize my calling is to be a storyteller mm-hmm. and that I can burrow into that and, you know, use that gift that God has given me to its fullest extent and to explore it so that I can tell stories and, you know, inspire other people who may really be good at going out and doing that. Uh, and so I've come to, it's helped me to sort of settle into the the gifting that I have and to just use that with all my, you know, might and all that, you know, that I can muster to do it the best um, and leave the, put it out there to inspire, to challenge and leave God to do the rest. Mm, that's so good. And, I know as you guys were changed, our families change. You know, we have, like I mentioned, one that's a missionary. A couple more say they want to be. We'll see. We'll see what God does. But even um, for those, you know, that, that maybe stay in our own little hometown here in Arkansas, just the compassion, the care. They see people differently. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they don't they don't see strangers. They just see people that need friends and that need, um, you know, to be loved with the love of God. And I think it, that is just so important and we could get that through books so that has been very impacting to our family so thank you oh that's wonderful to hear now as we close what books are you working at now so we can be looking forward to them uh well we're uh about a third of the way through albert schweitzer um who is a um a missionary doctor to africa and uh to the gabon and uh he's pretty amazing um he he ends up winning the nobel peace prize and uh he's just he's one of those people who can do everything by the time he's 30 he has three um phds Mm. wow (laughs) yeah and music philosophy and theology and then he god calls him to the mission field he decides the most useful way is to go as 
is to be a doctor. So then he uh, goes and gets a medical degree as well. So, um, you know, it's, I guess getting back to what you were saying before, it's about the long haul sometimes. Um, you know, it, things don't happen quickly in people's lives. Uh, he, you know, he's 30 years old when he decides that this – you know, what he really wants to do or what he's called to do and off he goes and does it. It has a a tremendous impact really on the world, um, you know, which is uh, seen demonstrated by him getting the Nobel Peace Prize. So uh, that's who we're working on right now, uh, which is... Yeah, and he's quite inspirational because in school he was a terrible student. He didn't (laughs) want... He uh, didn't, couldn't concentrate and he was a total daydreamer and... uh, he was always in trouble and he was always in the bottom classes and stuff. So he overcame that to get all his uh, degrees and became uh, renowned in all of the things that he studied. So he's mm. certainly an inspiration to kids. <laughs> and and like, as am I, it's like, you can be in remedial reading. You can fail English time after time. <laughs> but that does not mean you <laughs> may not end up a writer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's so true. And it reminds me of when we were reading George Mueller, um, you know, because he was just a troublemaker at the beginning. Mm-hmm, wasn't he? And my kids, like, I don't know, probably four or five chapters in, they're like, are you sure this is a missionary book? I don't think <laughs> this is a missionary book. This guy just, is doomed. <laughs> he just kept getting in so much trouble. And they kept asking me, let, let me see the cover. I don't think that's a missionary book. <laughs> and, you know, it's funny because George Mueller, I, I mean, I do love Adoniram Judson, but George Mueller is literally the only person that I can't really talk about without choking up. Um, there's just something about him and particularly that scene where, um, you know, anyone in England could put a child on a train and, you know, pin their George Mueller's name on their chest on a piece of paper and they would be delivered to the orphanage. I mean, that just gets me every single time. What a, what an amazing, amazing, uh, gift to have given, uh, to all of those children who, you know, would have had just horrible, horrible lives. Yeah. yeah, I've just that's the one that just gets me every time. <laughs> <laughs> They're all so good, though. Oh, well, thank you guys so much for being here. Um, where can listeners go to find more about you online? Uh, we have it's uh, it's in the process of being updated, but it's uh, bingebooks.com. And uh, in the next month or so, there'll be a new website replaced, the rather dated one that's there right now. So um, that's the best place to go and find out information about us. Um, and and if they want to contact us? Well, if they want to, if they do, lots of people want to email us. You can email us at bingebooks2 at gmail.com, and we will try and answer your queries, et cetera. Awesome. Um, that would be great. And we will put those in the show notes so that, they'll have that information. Thank you. Righty. Well, I have just loved this so much. I've been looking forward to it. um, And I just appreciate you. And thank you for all that you do to impact families. Oh, thank you, Tricia. And it's been a pleasure to be on your uh, podcast with you. Yeah, Thank I hope you. we can come on again when you've read a few more and oh, you can I, uh, I would love give that. me your kids' impressions. I, I've always loved to hear uh, what children find intriguing about the books. Okay, maybe next time I will let my kids come on. Yeah, I, I, right. or maybe one or two at a time. <laughs> one or two at a time. They'll love that. Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you. Okay, didn't you just love them? So after we stopped recording, we actually probably talked for another 30 minutes until I had to get off and do another recording. Honestly, Janet and Jeff, like, I just want you guys to be my best friends because we could just talk about missionaries and inspiration and leaving a legacy and all the things that gets me so very excited. So I love talking to them. I love hearing their hearts. I just love how God led them on this unexpected path. And then I love how he uses their stories um, for our good. And I just even love how Janet talks about having um, ADD and just not being able to focus and how that actually has benefited her writing because she skips over the boring parts. And my kids will tell you there are no boring parts in these books. So I would love for you to check out um, these YWAM books. And I'm super excited because I have connected with YWAM Publishing and we are having some special deals 
for my listeners. So if you go to the show notes, which if you just go to trishagoyer.com and then you click on podcast, you will see the graphic with Janet and Jeff. And then um, there's information there about the link to the show notes. Or if you just go to ywampublishing.com and then if you put Trisha Goyer in the search, it'll come up and we have um, picked out five audiobooks and five paper books for you at a discounted rate. So the five paper books, um, you can get them for $35. They're regularly $49.95. So for $35, and that includes free shipping. So what a deal. And then the audiobooks are ones that I picked out that are our family's favorite books that we've read. Um, so there's Nate Saint, Mary Slusser, Eric Lindell, um, Amy Carmichael and Corey Tinboon. So I hope you enjoy them. They are $60 for all of them. And that includes free shipping. Um, that's $109.95 value. So for instead of $109.95 for $60, you get the five audio CDs and then you get them shipped to you for free. So you are going to fall in love with these stories just as much as uh, just as quickly as I did and you'll love them just as much I am sure because they are our favorite things to listen to with the kids to read to with the kids so I know you will love that but as we're thinking about just how important it is to share these books um, and share these stories with our family it's something that I just want to encourage us today and so the walk it out verse of the day, and this is in the Amplified Version, it's Proverbs 13, 22. And so it says, a good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness to his children's children. And I just love that so much. Whatever we pour into our kids, whether we are reading scripture to them, whether we are reading missionary stories, whether we are sharing our personal lives and what God has done for us, that is our inheritance of moral stability and goodness. Now, I just think of my grandpa when I think of that. Um, And my grandma, she still lives with me. She's 89. But my grandpa was one of 11 children. He was born in Kansas. And during the Dust Bowl, moved to California. He served in World War II. um, And he worked in a door factory his whole life. They lived in a mobile home, in a mobile home park. And when he passed away, um, I did get his clock that is on my wall. But there was not a lot of money in the bank. There was not a lot of Um, earthly treasure, but he left an inheritance of moral stability and goodness. He was a kind person. He would walk around the mobile home park. He would, um, he was in his late seventies, early eighties, and he would mow the lawns for all the widows. And he would read his Bible. I remember going in the morning, just seeing him with his big Bible opened up on the table and sitting there and praying. And that is an inheritance. And that is what we can leave for our children. So a good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness to his children's children. Again, that is Proverbs 13, 22. So let me pray for you today. Well, God, I am just so thankful for my listener. I'm thankful um, for every moment that we can spend just in this crazy way of podcasting, um, that I can share stories and interview amazing people, and that my listeners can be encouraged. I pray my listener today each one will consider what it means to leave an inheritance um, and that will take the time to do kind of the hard things, whether it is reading a missionary story, sitting down, memorizing scripture, having family devotions, praying together. Those things kind of get pushed to the side when we leave our lives. But the stories that we share, the scripture that we share, the prayers that we share will be remembered. And I just pray my listener will be encouraged today. I thank you um, for each one of us that we um, just have the ability to connect in this way and that we each have the ability to leave a godly inheritance. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to Walk It Out. I just pray that you will, again, sit down, read God's word, and walk out and do what the Bible says. I know it has transformed my life. It has transformed Janet and Jeff's life. And I know it'll transform yours. Have a great week. Thanks for listening to Walk It Out. Head over to the show notes for this podcast and all past episodes at www.walkitoutpodcast.com. If you love the show, share it with someone you know who can make a radical difference in the world. We love new friends. See you next time.